Love you, Mini. I'm real Rukshan from the Swiss capital. Yeah. Oh, God. It's On been a long time. Let's go to Davos. Let's go to Davos. Let's go, let's go to Davos. Cruising through Melbourne Airport at three in the morning. Back check. Two thirty-six. Two thirty-six. First line. <laughs> First line. Trip starts with a line. But yeah, through customs and uh, immigration. I'm surprised they didn't put a block on block on you, Harvey. I'm a Zionist. Nobody controls me. We are guys on the way to Switzerland. Harvey? Harvey? Anything you want to say? Um, praying to God that these rows are ours. This is how kings do it. This is what we call Jewish business class. Jewish because it's half price. Business class because it's fit for a king. Chicken. Starting with these games, the tourist tax. <laughs> How much is five francs? Can I have a card? A bombshell. <laughs> We've had level down. Level down. Negative one. Basement level. <laughs> Starting with it. Look at this. It's made for my height. <laughs> We've got our own bed. Oh. Let's just say we've got our own bed. <laughs> There's no room. Shit. We may as well sleep on the... <laughs> so, so you've got to get in there. Yeah. So you've got to get in there. And security, you got to... What if you're fat? <laughs> oh. you got to... <laughs> That's good. Well, definitely, you know... It's definitely... We're uh, big spenders. Ladies and gentlemen from the Swiss capital, on our way into Davos. Yes, we're doing that in an election week. Yeah, I mean, I was actually torn about coming here while the election's happening, but we, did, we had a chat and we thought, you know what? This is where the people who actually set the agenda, despite whoever wins the election in Australia, the agenda for what happens in Australia and many of the countries around the world is set here. So we're gonna let the mainstream media focus on the election results. We're gonna let all the other great alternative uh, media in Australia do the live streams. We're here to bring you the other side of the story from the World Economic Forum and the WHO meeting. Um, can we need to get to La Punte. One way ticket or return? Well, uh, we'll just get one way, one way. Yeah. One way, so you don't return? We hopefully never come back. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how many persons? Um, two. two. But he's a child, so it's maybe cheaper. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm not you travel first or second class? The lowest class you have. What's the difference in price? Check. You have any reductions? What do you mean? Reduction cards in Switzerland or no? First time here. First time here, but if you give me a reduction, maybe I'll come back. But unlike those who are coming here to preach climate responsibility in their jets and private limos. This is how we're getting around.
believe, a hundred and what was that? Hundred and six dollars. Hundred and six dollars each to get there. Yeah, that's just one of the, That's a very expensive trip. It's, it's just mental because that's economy. So to think about, but I think it's worth it. Remember the the last straw. I reckon, and I think that makes this whole thing worth it above just the World Economic Forum is a fact that at the same time here the WHO is essentially meeting to take control of even Australia. Yeah, I mean how hard has it been for us over the last two years dealing with our state governments and our federal governments and to think now that we have a worldwide body, these organisations, um, you know, these NGOs in an essence running our lives, calling the shots. I've never cooked turkey in my life. <laughs> it, says, it says grill. Just grill it? There you go. We've come to the uh, only store. Thirty one store open, lucky for us. And that's it's Volg. Yeah, there's no restaurants here, there's no nights out. It's just uh, you're gonna cook. Thank you, Max. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I apologize for my friend. Oh, look at Rukshan. He's a pretty. What's your room today? I do Davos. Davos Platz. So here we are, Avi. This is it. In uh, Davos. What is it taking us? What day is it today? It's the third day, I think. Two days. Days. They're taking us three, three days. whole days. Next week this time we won't be able to be standing where we are. That's, That's why right. we've come early. Yeah, because if you can see here, I'll just point the camera around. There's a security zone being set up there. So I think that will be where things are blocked off. And this whole place is going to be locked down pretty hard. You've got the marquees behind me being set up just next to the conference center. Uh, that's where a lot of the uh, oligarchs and the elites will be socializing, no doubt planning their agenda for us. What do you reckon? Absolutely, but we'll be here to tell the other side of the story. But for today, let's see what they're doing to prepare for next week. Yeah, let's see how they're setting up. Let's see what it's all about. If you're ever in doubt as to whether the mainstream media is going to actually ask the tough questions, I think that gives you the answer. They're part of it. Yeah. They're literally a part of it. Oh, the purveyors of misinformation there. As you can see, the security is really ramping up behind us in the lead up to the annual meeting here in Davos. Military everywhere. Police, as you can see, converging on this small town in Switzerland. So we've got IBM here, virtue signaling. Let's create a better world with a smaller carbon footprint. <laughs> Let's create and that changes everything. I wonder what their carbon footprint was just to set this up for a week. <laughs> Such hypocrites. I wonder what their carbon footprint was for the executives to fly into Davos on their private jets and their limos and everything that they're gonna come here with. It's all for show. Look at the building and then look, they've kind of built this fake wall in front of it. It's everything here is fake and I think it's fitting. It's fitting that all their buildings are fake because <laughs> everything about this and them and everything to do with this World Economic yeah. Forum is 
fake. Not even the India Lounge? Is the India Lounge fake? 100%. <laughs> we only believe in the Sri Lanka Lounge. Just think about the waste of money and resources going into self-promotion here. But they, they justify this though. There's justification for this from that side, saying this is necessary to do. Now, do you reckon Zelensky will make an appearance? He'd be silly not to. Come on, how else is he going to win the war against Russia if he doesn't show up to the WEF? So there you have it. We're first day here on the ground in actual Davos right. to show people what's going on. I mean, the conference hasn't started yet, but we saw a bit of the behind the scenes, the setup and really all the um, activities that go into putting this together. And you see, it's literally a fake town that's being created for this conference. And uh, you know, take, take it as, as you may, but uh, you know, there's something very, uh, what, what, how do you explain that? Ironic about Ironic. it. How do you make it? Rebecca, I had one job. <laughs> Rebel team getting ready to go head into Davos for day one of the Congress. Do you mind not filming? This is a sensitive zone. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's going on, man? Where are you headed off? We are heading off to the yeah, main strip of Davos where all the globalist, I want to say scumbags, but uh, I, don't uh, I don't think that will be included in the edit. Yeah, but, um, the globalists are eating bugs. Yeah, eating bugs, <laughs> bug sandwich, uh, plates and platters of them. Oh, wow. It's going to be great. Oh, no. Nice. So we're going to interrupt their meals, tell them that they're wrong, oh, and uh, we'll reorganise their world. Oh, wow. Hey guys, we're just, you know, en route to the uh, World Economic Forum in Davos. Davos. Very exciting, very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so, Davos. We're ready to uh, spread some truth, which I'm looking forward to do. There you go. Let's expose the hypocrites, mm -hmm. all of them, mm -hmm. and the elites. They don't care about working class people. And this is our American Uber driver from New York. So the first day coming here with the team from Rebel News. Long journey, driving up up a mountain, <laughs> winding roads. So it wasn't like the train journey. Uh, we got up early, got our stuff ready, and came down to spend the day here at the Economic Forum. What's going on, man? Where are we? Mate, um, so this is really interesting because we have yeah. Antifa who are protesting for the exact same thing that the right is protesting. Yeah, that's what I noticed as well. It's the same thing, the same talking points, everything. Yeah. Today, we've done a monologue. I filmed a load of B roll across the strip of Davos, and I have Kian Simone waiting in Canada to help collate the footage, put it together, and make something special whilst we carry on. So, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. What did you get up today? What did I get up today? I walked from one end of the promenade to the other end and then back to the other end and back to the other end and I, I got a good look at everything. I saw all the companies and all the organizations were here. Um, I, I thought I, there were some funny things. There was like the um, Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi prince who ordered the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. He was giving out free soft ice to select of those attendees. So he thought, was giving it up? No, no, no. His organization was, but I thought that was very nice. Yeah. Um, I thought that was very nice. got me really excited. <laughs> What's it been like, Avi, on the first day? It's been pretty quiet. Like you can see that people are just obviously rolling into town. Um, the the carbon footprint is certainly uh, nice and high. With the yeah, well, of... actually, on the carbon footprint, the first thing we noticed when we came out of the car was uh, protesters from Antifa here protesting against about climate change and against the forum itself. Yeah. Now you spoke to one of the yeah. uh, the organisers. What was interesting about what she had to say? It was just bizarre because on one hand, all the talking points were exactly the same as what you would hear from conservatives now. Protesting the WEF today um, just because we think it's an undemocratic meeting of the world's elites and these are the people that, that cause the problems of our time. But I can't hear any difference in what the right is saying to what you're arguing. Um, and 
then when you put that to her, she suddenly distances herself saying, no, no, but, the, you know, racism or whatever. But yeah. really it was like, no, it's different because we don't, you know, they're all into this big conspiracy that it's yeah. a cabal and whatever, but we actually want a globalist um, control. We just don't want it to be these people, essentially yeah. what it was. Um, and then I, you know, the, the issue was she wanted a globalist response to the crisis, you know, facing the world, the climate change crisis. But then I said, okay, does that include Russia and China? But you still want a globalist solution to it, which is unlike the right. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't really, like, tackle climate change, for example, or worldwide inequality without talking to each other, without worldwide co cooperation. I think that's pretty clear. Would you get China and Russia involved in that? Well, um, like I said, it has to be um, a democratic um, <laughs> solution and democratic work. And I don't think these kinds of countries um, are very democratic right now. Um, so, um, but, but you say it's a, a global problem and China's the biggest emitter. Yeah. So how would you tackle climate change without including China? Well, of course, there has to be talks. But I'm sorry, I really have to um, okay, okay. continue. Thank, thank, thank you so much for your time. I've got to go. She had to go. Well, first she said no, because <laughs> okay. they're, they're, they're kind of, uh, you know, not de democratic. Yeah. And I, and then when I put it to her, well, how do you do that with the biggest emitter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So interesting, like, I guess, because some of the chants were, they were pretty rough. They were wishing death upon the WF from my translation that I got from some people there. Having that same kind of sentiment, but then also wanting these global bodies to exist to support their causes. Yeah. Doesn't that kind of show you that these groups are really just about having things done their way? Their way. Their yeah, way yeah. It's not about, there's, there's no consistency in it at all. Yeah. Um, because these groups are fully against people that were, you know, would be protesting against the vaccination mandate, for instance. Antifa. They, yeah. they attacked but it's, by the But bus. it's the same, you know, globalist or same government entity, oh, the same bodies that put those rules. Yes. Right? Yep. And they fully support them for that, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but as yeah. soon as it comes to this stuff. Exactly. Yes. And they're in there right now at, uh, at um, the World Economic Forum discussing issues like climate change. Yeah. It's not like they're not talking about it. Well, everything but, here is virtue signaling about climate change. But these guys still aren't happy. No. One of the things that you know, people say said about some of the work that we've done here is that actually for us being media here, we don't have access to the official place. Now, what's interesting is that doesn't really matter because even they're bored of the official place that's behind the security barrier and they come out into the into the fake town of Davos. But I'm calling Davos a fake town because, you know, of the, the, the um the fake buildings that they've put up. Otherwise it's sad. Everything otherwise it's an amazing, beautiful place with, you know, really awesome people and just cutting to that, we met a bloke that actually watched your video, the video that he we He only interviewed. started following us he now. He followed you when he saw your video, and he's a local in Davos. He recognized you on the street, and he's, what did he say? He literally said, mate, thank you so much, because exactly what you said is so true. It, it, this is all fake, this is all for show, it's all bullshit. This last week wasn't here like this. Um, and I was gonna try interview him, but he works for a, a local charity, and he goes, oh, I can't, like I goes, I don't, I don't wanna go on camera because because of the char charity, yeah, not, exactly. because of, not, not, not because not not because I don't agree. I absolutely yeah. agree, and I've started following you today. And then on top of that, on, on what you said, they all do come out here, in fact. Yeah, who came out? Well, you met someone very special out here. Rebecca, how are you doing from New York Times? Can I ask you a quick question as Avi from Rebel News? How is the public meant to believe that the New York Times is here to actually ask the tough questions when you're here as an invited guest? How are people meant to rely on the mainstream media? We have... We if you wouldn't mind, we're just having That's a, a, a just if you could give us, you know, thank you. No, I, you don't want to explain to people why we should trust the mainstream media. No? Of course, no comment. There we go. So that's the point here is in Davos you have the mainstream media that are not here to report the truth. They are here as part of the event. Invited guests with their white name tags. And I politely walked up to her to ask her how, because she's there, that they, they, they've all got different um, passes yeah. and they're all different coloured. And, yeah. and it's, it's, it's a... It's a, um, it's a segregated event. It's a segregated event to all different classes and... Yeah. and it's, 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 it's like an Indian class system where yes. they, and they're really proud of yeah, where they, they sit. Yeah, they display their class system. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so she's got the white one, which yeah. is like the top one. It's an invited guest. Yeah. And I just went to her and asked her, how is the public supposed to rely on your impartial reporting 
when you're an invited guest here, yeah. when you're part of the program, and obviously, you know, well, I didn't expect her to answer, but her answer, her response, um, I think, is very telling. Yeah. And that's the thing. So the media is involved in panelling a lot of the things that are happening here. Now, some people might be like, oh, well, that's, you know, media can play that role. But once they start getting involved in these, in these kind of um, forums and projects and so forth, they do lose that impartiality that, as media, we should have. And I think that's why she couldn't answer those questions, right? 100%. 100%. But it's been a nice day. It was raining for a bit. Um, yeah. But the sun's back out. So. And we came here with just winter clothes, both of us. Yeah. And we're fully in our summer outfits. We've got, yeah. we've got about three shirts, but we, um, we're just going to have to keep washing them because, uh, I'm, I, you know what? It's not my fault. Yeah. Um, Rhonda, you know, yeah. she, my missus, she, she, <laughs> she checked Google, yeah, and she told us it's very cold. Yeah, so your your luggage is just pretty much bags. Yeah, we. Sorry, we like, you like your luggage is pretty much just. We jackets. both went shopping for winter clothes yeah. because of Rhonda. She may have saved my life, yeah, but she ruined my holiday. Shame. <laughs> I love you, Dad. <laughs> Rebel News. Yes, the Canadian TV station. Uh, it's a uh, it. media organization. We have um, English. Yes, mate. United States. Yep. Rebel Press Passes. Who's from Australia? Here we go. Here we go, mate. How you going? Hello, oh, mate. Where are you from? I used to be living in Brisbane for. Brizzy boy, what are you doing up here? Oh, fuck no, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it looks, it looks like that, you could be in a worse place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How long have you been here? Um, a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. 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 A couple of years? Yeah, I used to live in Brisbane for 14 years and then I moved back actually. But you got like a bit of an Aussie, like, you got Aussie, but you're not Aussie. Yeah, nah. Oh. Well, I, I was born here in Switzerland and then I moved down in 97. In front, you were born in Switzerland, you moved to Australia in 97 and then came back here a few years ago. Exactly. So you're a Swiss Aussie? Half, half. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Swiss yeah. Aussies. 50-50, mate. <laughs> I love the mate. <laughs> He's also Aussie, but you'll never know from his face. <laughs> Sri Lankan Aussies. Sri Lankan Aussies. It's almost as rare as uh, Swiss Aussies, I reckon. So are you born in Australia? I am. Yeah. Okay. Where? Sydney? Melbourne. Melbourne? Alright. Sounds good, mate. Yep. Awesome. Alright. You take care, buddy. Is, it, is this, this is where it seems empty. Is It, it was empty yesterday and, and it's today. It's empty now, mate. It's full uh, Oh, it's busy. Yeah. Oh, shit, dear. Ah, uh, well, it looks it's empty. The other yeah, side, when we left, it was there was a massive line. Yeah. But it was it's not like no, that. It's pretty much packed now. Oh, okay. Everyone is here now, so yeah. There's not not a lot of uh, so traveling in in and out. Everyone stays in there now. Nah, yeah, we're just yeah. staying up in La Punce or whatever. Oh, okay. Asia's one. All right, guys. All right, mate. Thank you. Yeah, buddy. Thank, Thank you. you. Have an easy one. Why are you singing here today? Uh, because there is a huge event here that uh, it's land space and uh, it's very very good. Do you want Klaus Schwab to come here? <laughs> no. <laughs> I like the berets. This is from uh, Re Rebel News. Sorry? Uh, Canadian Rebel News. Do you want to have something to say? No. no? Tell Australia. Do you, want to, do you have a message for Australia? <laughs> for Australia. Well, the beautiful country and uh, enjoy Davos. <laughs> Keep this place safe. I think there's many uh, criminals around. Hello, so you're from the WHO, the Special 
Envoy bum, for Cope. I'm just going to a meeting, actually. It's nice of you to talk to me. I'm not doing uh, that other thing at the moment, COVID at the moment. I'm just walking to a meeting about food. But I guess you're at the WEF, you're an invite. Sorry? You're invited to the, the forum? Yes, but uh, I'm certainly invited to the forum, yeah. Yeah, you can see my badge. Yeah, so, so why do you think this year it's about the, the they're, they're talking about the fact that they're regaining trust. Do you think it has anything to do with the WHO? Uh, so, um, I mean, I, for me, trust has been uh, uh, difficult to maintain with uh, COVID. But you'll have to tell me why is that? who you're reporting for. Rebel News. Sorry? Rebel News. Why do you think people don't trust? It's been hard to maintain trust through COVID. Because COVID's affected poor people everywhere really badly. Was lockdowns ever a good idea? Well, lockdowns are part of the response. But we say there are things that you can do before you lock down that reduce the degree of problem. So we've always said lockdown is the last resort. And of course we worry if we think some countries Do you think are Australia locked lockdown down too, too much? Early. What? Do you think Mel Victoria, do you think in Australia they had the largest, harshest lockdown? Do you think that they locked down too much and they were too severe? I do not like commenting on decisions of individual governments. They have to take account of the local circumstances. There's no hard and fast rule, and so I will not answer the question by agreeing with your statement. I'm just saying that... But they say they followed your advice. That's, uh, I, that's for them. So I nobody... Is, this is why a lot of people blame the WHO, yeah, is because governments, governments put it in on you and... Of course. But what, WHO is owned by 194 governments, and uh, there will be some who don't agree with others. And that's normal. And there's some countries like Switzerland, we're here now in Switzerland, yeah. and they never really had any COVID restrictions and it's pretty free here. Yeah. Do you think it's a, a bit ironic that they're holding the World Health Organization in Geneva for, and discussing the pandemic treaty in the one place that didn't really have the kind of response that the WHO was pushing? WHO did not push for people to use lockdown as the primary means of control. WHO says that what you do with a disease like COVID... So do you think Switzerland got it right? No, I'm not saying whether they got it right or wrong. Uh, I'm just telling you... I'll stop now because you're asking me quite aggressive questions. Well, well I think and the I whole... I didn't ask to be interviewed. This is an interview done against my approval. The and vaccination used, is also... No, the vaccine... Used, if this interview people is are vac force vaccinated do you think that's okay that's against I've, their will and that's that's who been, pushed the the, the vaccine no, i have never called for forced vaccination myself do you realize do you think that they should drop those mandates around the world do you i have said mandates i've said vaccination mandates that's really a last resort you know what, what resort we have? What point you should you deal. ever force somebody to have a vaccine? Any I resort? Would not, I would personally never want anything mandated. You see, you can't... Why is that not the WHO official position? I am not giving the WHO official position. Gosh, you're an aggressive interviewer. But I'm still entertaining you. I, I hope it. viewers can understand, and I hope this is not cut out, that I've been ambushed in the street... And I'm responding to this gentleman's... I don't even know his name. Of Yemeni. I'm responding to his questions because I believe that it is my duty to attempt to communicate. I so appreciate, I I appreciate that. I don't I mean to... I, I don't mean to be... Strange. We're just running fast, so that's why yeah. I, just, I'm, I, I get... Well, I'm late for a meeting. All right, you can go to the meeting. I guess... Yeah. I guess. The, what would you say to people watching this who do blame your organisation? Well... Inevitably, the, co the pandemic... Not just poor people, though. No, no, everybody. The pandemic has been horrible. And you have to find somebody to blame. But quite honestly, I've worked as an envoy for WHO. And I personally do not think WHO has made consistent errors in this. I think that inevitably, when we look backwards, there will always be points where we say we should have done different. This has been so horrible. And it's, by the way, the pandemic's not finished. It's still going on. 
So that, those words will scare people because they're, they're thinking we're just getting back to life and you're telling us from the WHO it's not over. But most go of us China. had COVID. Go to China. Go to North Korea. Speaking of China, though, in the beginning of the pandemic... There's still a pandemic going on in China. There's still a pandemic in North How Korea. How are we supposed to trust anything happening in China? They lied to us from the beginning. The WHO covered up from there for them in the beginning. How uh, we you see, that again, that style of questioning... That's what most of the world yeah, believes because we experienced it and we all suffered. In Melbourne, Australia, we were locked down know, for know, a year and a half. But I just have to tell you, I don't think... I personally can't see that WHO should be blamed for this pandemic. Well, if the responsibi responsibility doesn't lie with them, then why should they hold any authority? Well, I think you have to remember that WHO is an organisation that exists, owned by 194 countries, and all it tries to do is to offer the best advice it can to everybody, but it's up to individual countries to decide whether to follow it. You have to let me go. Does it, does it sometimes get it wrong? Well, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not actually going to say any answer to that question because there's been great reviews done of WHO. I guess, I guess uh, last question. I asked that, I asked that because, because big tech that are here, they rely on you. So if somebody says something online that contradicts what you're saying, what the WHO says, they get banned from social media. Yeah, so I don't, again, I am not... Do you know I don't work for WHO? I'm an envoy on behalf of WHO. Okay. And uh, I try to so do you're distancing my... yourself from No, them. I'm not distancing myself. It's just that you are asking questions that I can't okay. answer. All right. Thank you for your time. Now, Avi, I've been following you around today on the street here, uh, watching you do your thing, and you've interviewed a, a, a mix of interesting people, right? Yeah. You've interviewed military leaders. You've interviewed... Um, uh, ministers of state. Yep. Uh, you've been, and just right now, you interviewed an envoy from the WHO. Um, what's it been like being on the outside of that and still having access to these people? Oh, it's unbelievable. No, it, you know, there's no place in the world where you're going to see, you're going to be able to meet so many powerful people on the street, just you know, freely like that. Mm. And. Um, it's, it's crazy. I'm surprised that no one else is doing what we're doing, is trying to hold, you know, to ask tough questions, hold these people accountable, these people that do actually yeah. control the agenda. You're from Microsoft, is that right? Yeah. Why, why is Microsoft wearing like a UN pin? <laughs> Rebel News, Avi from Rebel News. Well, we, uh, because we do a lot of work on the SDGs, um, you know, we address things like skilling and climate change, internet access for everyone, and I happen to be an SDG advocate uh, myself for appointed by the UN Secretary General. And, and this year... Get you into your thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So one more question. Okay. One more question. Is, this year they're saying that this is about regaining trust. Why do you think so much of the world has lost trust in the WEF? Well, the first thing I would say is we live in a world where I think people question much more everything around them. And questioning can be a challenge, but you know, questioning, I think, is also an opportunity mostly to provide people with better information, more information, and that's one of the things that the World Economic Forum does. But that doesn't answer the, that doesn't answer the question why people mistrust, <laughs> and specifically Bill Gates. No. How are you going, guys? Yeah. Hey, sorry, I didn't mean to skip. Are you guys vaccinated? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, thank God. Thank God. You know, I want to make sure everybody's safe in the World Economic Forum. We don't want none of these unvaccinated peskies roaming around getting past security. Stand here to make people aware that the World Economic Forum is talking about improving the state of the world, but doing exactly the opposite. Exactly the opposite. Yeah. How's that? For example, uh, there will be a totalitarian system. Yeah, uh, Klaus Schwab says that uh, you will own nothing. Yeah, and you will be happy. He says that there is no democratic procedure behind it. So he just decides for the whole world what makes us happy. So I'm distributing a flyer which says, okay, Klaus Schwab and Hilde Schwab, you just start. You rent a tiny house and we come and have a look how happy you are. And if you're not happy, we throw your banana over the fence. So he should just start. No? Usually the top billionaires, they say what we have to do, but they themselves, they don't do it. 
Uh, how you doing, sir? How you doing? I'm doing well. Why, why are you here in the WEF? Why am I here? It's a great place to meet people, to uh, tell them about what's happening in India, to transact business, and do a host of other things. Listen, there's so many Indian states here. Why are they competing on this one street? They're not competing. <laughs> They're showing you the diversity of India. They're showing you what different states can do. I can almost believe you're a politician. I'm the minister. So, <laughs> so now that's why uh, I support all of them. Do you think we should change it from World Economic Forum to maybe Indian Economic Forum? There's no, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. I've been associated with the organization since it was called the European Management Forum. So I told Mr. Klaus Schwab then, if you have to woo the capitalists of the world, go beyond the European ones. Go and get the Americans also and get the other. So it's, I'm very happy they're doing well. So but you're India's the reason why Klaus Schwab is ruling the world? I'm not the reason. I'm just somebody who's been interacting with him since the 80s. But you have fun, my friend. I, I don't know if you're allowed to drink and walk in Switzerland. Oh, I won't walk. I'll, I'll just move this way slowly. But I'm eating also, so I think... You can, in Facebook, they're actually doing um, the meta universe, so you can imagine you're going there. No. Do you know if Zuckerberg's coming? Um, I don't know. No, no. I just want him to unban my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Our Prime Minister is uh, spearheading uh, the uh, climate change agenda. She was uh, a speaker in the COP26 and she is recognized now as one of the main global leaders for climate change. Oh, really? So do, what do you think about this here where they're building a, a, a town which looks like it's not very sustainable, they, they built this up in the last week and there's a big carbon footprint for today, do you think it's a bit, it's a bit bizarre that people are coming here on the climate change agenda but it's not really practicing what they preach? I, I'm assuming you came on a private jet? No I didn't, oh, no. <laughs> not at all, I came on a You're one of the flight. only ones that didn't. <laughs> I came on a commercial flight. Uh, no that is an issue but uh, I think, uh, you know, it's climate change uh, problems are not going to be resolved overnight. So it's a process. And I think that process is very much now in uh, place and uh, it's happening. Is this where I come to get my YouTube re-monetized? No, no, sorry, sorry. unfortunately not. We do not do not have this power. You don't care? Okay, a couple bucks on the side? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is, why is Colombia here in the World Economic Forum? Uh, office uh, uh, Colombian Army. Oh, you're the... Chief uh, House Nariño. Okay. Is there other chiefs here from other countries or just Colombia? Colombia. Just Colombia? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, thank yeah, you. That makes, that makes sense in the World Economic Forum that just Colombia would have the chief military guy here. What are, you, what are you doing here? I'm going to the conference. I am attending so many events. Yeah. Why? Are you are you invited or you're invited? You're invited. Yes. Why were you invited and me not? Uh, why me me and you not? Look at you. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? What do you do for work? I am an investor, an entrepreneur. So are you very rich? Uh, not very, I wish I am very, not very yet. Will do my best to become one day a little bit more rich, richer than now. Where, where are you from? Germany. Oh, Germany, because uh, Klaus Schwab today said in his welcoming speech that this, this lot all control, essentially control the world, what happens here. Is that true? It's true. Do you want to be part of that? I want to be part of that and I want to change the world. Yeah, but they want to control Canada. the world. No, no, not controlling. But that's what he said. Who? Klaus Schwab this morning. Oh, no. Do you like Klaus? No, no, no. It's a rebel. No, no. <laughs>
No, not really, Dad. It's just a off the route there. Uh. It's 10 minutes. You can see driving on this. Oh my yeah. god, I'm like gone. Shocking. What? So it's not just me. I thought you looked a little bit tired there, buddy. Oh, <laughs> what happened? You get into the whooper. <laughs> I never got off it. <laughs> never got off it. So you're still on it. They, they all look tired, don't they? So you guys have another big day? Another big day. Yeah. Two, more, two more days. Two more days, That's yeah, for, for us as well. We're probably leaving on Thursday, Thursday afternoon. We're leaving Thursday morning. Right. Done. Done, finished? Bloody hell. <laughs> Enough, enough criminals there. I'm done. <laughs> See you, mate. See you, buddy. <laughs>
this was the globalist safe space, <laughs> but rebels come here, <laughs> the Arby's come here. And I think they've got, because um, one of the guys you interviewed, one of the Who guys, they took a photo of Arby's um, badge. So maybe he's distributed around there. Because when, when I walk around with Arby now and the rebel team, people like look, grease him off. They look down. Some people walk past there turn their badges around so there's a bit of shame happening here as well they're ashamed of who they are yeah and, and that WHO guy that you just mentioned you know he really put the guilt trip on us at the end after we like after I put just seriously questions that any regular Aussie or, or anyone around the world that has suffered under the the guidelines that he is very yeah. much responsible for but because he realised that it w w we got him. He was out of you know, a controlled environment and we exposed him. He suddenly put this massive guilt trip on me and then when that didn't work, what did he say to you? We didn't get- I also had, so this WHO guy came behind me, he tapped me on the back. He said, I hope you're proud to be involved. Like very sincerely, he said it to me, I hope you're proud to be involved in this type of ambush journalism. And, uh, so, are you? Huh? Are you? No, I think this is what needs to be done. I mean, this is- So you are? Yeah, I don't think it's ambush journalism at all. At all. You know what, it is actually what journalism used to be. I think be. this is what it is. That baby next year, they'll put their <laughs> Davos in Guantanamo Bay so no one else can come there to see what they're doing. I reckon they might reconsider putting their names in. Name badges, yeah. But, um, um, I, I haven't, but I don't know, maybe you have. Have you found any bug sandwiches? I've been looking for the bug sandwiches everywhere I've gone because I really want to try one out because you know, it's meant to be really good for us. Take you back to your fam? No. <laughs> but no, they're not serving bug sandwiches here. Uh, it's very kind of, uh, I wouldn't say it's too expensive the food, but you know, it's just posh food. So there's no bug sandwiches here for the people here. They should do what they preach. You know, I would have expected all that kind of delicacies, bug sandwiches. Do what they preach. The only yeah. thing that here, the only thing that they do that they preach is segregated society and yep. a class system where they all have their name tag and they have their class listed. That's the only thing. Yep. And that's because the powerful ones want to be respected as they walk around. Yes. Right? That's it. Yeah. Everything else, they come here in their jets, in their limos, in their, you know, it's meant to be electric vehicles. Yeah. The electric vehicles are very minimal. The yeah, most of the taxis sure. here yeah. are Mercedes Benz and that's they're right. on diesel or petrol. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're, they're all coming here. And then we've had less of a um, carbon, carbon footprint here. than anyone here. That's right. We are climate Couldn't warriors. We're Couldn't saving the planet. Saving the planet. Uh, can I ask you something? You know the police in there that have the WEF patch? Yeah. Are they is are they actually WEF police or is it just um, is it just that they're police that are wearing a patch? No, it's just police. Ah, so what's that patch? Just for fun. Yeah. To be honest, yeah, I have this patch as well. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. Why are you not wearing it? Uh, because I don't have to. Ah, so, so whoever wants to wear it can wear it? Sorry? So whoever wants to wear it can wear it? Not really, there are some who that, have to. Oh, you have yeah. to. It's so weird, because the media today put said that it's not real, or that it's just... Yeah, I know, I've, I've seen it, yeah, but, uh, yeah. It's, why are they playing dress-ups? I want to know that. Sorry? Uh, why are they playing dress-ups for the WEF? Yeah, from uh, police uh, tactics and so I'm not allowed to tell you. Oh, you're not. Uh, okay? Okay. Uh, where's our Australian friend? It was here yesterday, two days, the Australian police. No, I know. I know uh, you know him? Yeah, yeah. Tell him when you see him, we said g'day. It's the last day. It's the last day here. We see him every day, we had a chat. Mark, now a good time? How are you? How, How you doing? I miss you from yesterday. Nice to see you again. Yeah, no, I'm Who's happy. your friend? Uh, you don't want to introduce Jay, me? Uh, How Jay you doing? Very well, thank you. Yeah. Yes, that's good. Yeah. Any bug sandwiches today? I haven't had anything to eat today. No, thank you. So, I actually haven't. I so? haven't. I haven't had anything to eat today. But if you got any recommendations? I don't know. I own nothing, so I'm happy. Okay. Well, that's good. Sure, if they want to eat bugs, let them eat bugs. I was just enjoying my very nice uh, pizza with um, really nice um, beef on it. And if they want to eat bugs, oh, nothing and be happy about it. It's all about the food. When you're talking about that panel, how do you define a woman? Oh, you're just looking for us. Uh, how do we define a woman? You're looking for some clickbait. No, we're talk if you're on a panel, we're talking about well, women if you, empowerment. If you ask my mother, who's a doctor, she would say someone with two X chromosomes. Okay. That, 
I'm, I'm, I probably agree with your mother. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, just interesting. Anyways, good luck. We, Look, can I? Is that the one? That one's not paddable. I can see. This one is ferocious. Do you want to? She's so jealous. Hey, when you meet Klaus Schwab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Klaus Schwab, yeah, who said uh, there's too many people. Uh, remember that? Or too many uh, useless people, is that what he said? It is a part of humanity that we recycle, we just don't consume and just throw it for somebody else to take care of it. I agree with you. The only thing I don't think we need to recycle is a WEF that can go straight in the trash can. <laughs> Again, I leave it up to you. Naz, how you doing, mate? Good, my name is How are you? How are you? Hey, tell us. Nice to meet you, everybody. Do you think Do you think it's cool that you're standing here and you're being employed? Like you're getting paid by the World Economic Forum to pr to promote their product? I'll tell you what's cool. This is the video. How are you guys? Give me, give me, give me. You know what's really cool? Is that all this was done for no money. You did it for free. For free, my so friend. you're willing to sell yourself yeah, 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 yeah. for free. I'm selling myself for free well, but, because I have opinions but, but and I agree you, with those you, opinions. You push the climate change agenda, you pu push a lot of these yeah. agendas, these work agendas. But here, what's but the current? Friend, what's we've the done more for climate change than you have. Yeah? What we've, have we done? We've done. How did you get here? We've done more for climate change than you, you have. How did you get here? How did you get here? See you later. Naz, Naz, how did you get here? Bye. How did you get here? How many in your entourage? How did you get here? What's your carbon footprint? <laughs> Naz Daily. How are you, man? I'm Israel. Hi. Do you eat meat? I eat meat. What's I your footprint? I don't, but I'm not the one here. I'm not the one standing here pretending that I stand for all these How things. Are you, man? I'm doing good, brother. How are you? But you, you, you do, mate. You do. There you go. The biggest hypocrite on oh, YouTube. You want the truth, though? Rebel News. Alright guys, so here we are at the WHO in Geneva. Uh, we've made it this far and uh, we've come, I've come here to try to see uh, Dr. David Nabarro, uh, one of the WHO special envoys that he encountered on the streets of the um, Davos. Any luck with uh, Nabarro? No, so surprisingly he didn't answer the email as, you know, he guilt tripped you so <laughs> hard into, into giving him a real opportunity not to be ambushed, but um, no, suddenly he's uh, he's gone MIA. But this is it. This is where they decide our future in Australia and m many of the other countries. Where you know, I made that point. All those flags. I promise you, the citizens of those countries would not vote for you know, especially Tedros. He's got yeah. another five-year term after what he's done in the last two years. Getting another five years. This is honestly a a hard place to look at as an Australian that has gone through everything we went through because of what these people I agree got wrong and it's so secretive right it's so secretive here we've just come here to film in a public space here and um, in Switzerland a country that's a democratic nation and we have the security guards telling us that we can't film the buildings yeah yeah is everything okay uh, now it's stop to to film why because you have not authorization no. Not film. One second. Film. Why no? Why do you need authorization here? Yes, it's double show. Why can't yeah. you film the World Health Organization? Because it's official. If you said double yeah. show is bad. Ah. Yeah. Double show. When you film, hey, it's okay. Double show. He said, yeah, okay, you film. If I say it's bad, oh, perhaps I don't. Yeah. Know. Maybe so I do, so what does can, it matter? We can film know. if we like the World Health Organization, but if we're reporting badly on the World Health Organization, we can't film. <clears throat> so they, they don't seem too happy with um, filming the World uh, Criminal, I mean, Health Organization. How you doing, mate? Bonjour. Bonjour. Vous êtes de... Do you speak English? Mm, très peu. Vous you êtes have de la profession, vous êtes journaliste? Vous êtes euh, alors, on va contacter euh, le centre de contrôle pour voir si vous avez une autorisation du. Bring someone in English. I don't speak French, right? Il s'agit du journaliste Yemini Y E M I N I Avi de son prénom A V I. My name sounds good in French too. This is certainly an image of health. Uh, he's got his masks tied to his uh, security belt. It's uh, both oh, secure. Please, please, just one moment, please. Okay. Thank you. What? 
Hold on. Yes. It's possible to, to do your interview. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just um, for the, the image. The image, yeah. Uh, yes, not, not inside the building. We're not going inside. Okay. That's okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Just uh, around. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh. So, so they're doing these rules and pandemic legislations and so forth from a building. They're telling us that we can't even film uh, without getting exclusive permission from them. But they're deciding on things that are injected into our body and so forth, <laughs> sometimes without our consent, through coercion. And it's just crazy, right? Like this is kind of the system that they've created and they want to hide uh, from the people as much as possible. I think, I don't understand French or whatever language you're speaking, but he was, he was some, saying something along the lines of, if you're filming the building in the background, they're worried about people saying negative things about the building. Yeah, that's what I understood. That's what I understood from what he was saying to us. They, that, that, and and he, he was saying like, we don't know if you're here to give us a positive or negative story. That's what I understood. I'll have yeah. to speak to me. And, and it's so mind blowing because that's, I, I believe it. It makes total sense. And yeah. at the end we stood up for ourselves and we were all right. And we got what we, we came here to do. But um, this is it. This is the end of our week. The end of our week. Uh, we fly back to Melbourne tomorrow after a stopover in uh, Zurich, just overnight, a few hours from here. So coming to here from Davos, it was about a, a five to six hour drive. Uh, with stops in between so it's been a hard slog uh, all the driving and getting around these places but I, I think it's been worth it to see actually what happens right to see some of the behind the scenes particularly at um, the World Economic Forum uh, and definitely just coming here to see what, what it's all about at the um, World Health Organization here in Geneva as well and I think this is the type of uh, you know access and this is the type of um, you know, content that the world doesn't get to see because it's so controlled so contrived that everything that is put through uh, it's so uh, manipulated the way that they give information to us that we hardly see uh, the reality of what happens and what these people actually think yeah, absolutely totally yeah well how did you feel this week when oh I thought it went really well yeah, yeah. I was very impressed with uh, Arby's uh, ambush interviews <laughs> I, think they, I think they might change their roles the rules for uh, Davos in the coming years and they've got a big picture of RV plastered in the uh, in the um... it was funny when they were, they, the last day they were like walking past and I don't know if we caught it but they were like walking past the covering, and their, covering badges. their badges yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and looking down so the word's gotten around that there's uh, a few pesky Australians and Canadians and Americans here from Rebel <laughs> News and uh, it's particularly in a WF um, so yeah I think it's been great and um, you know it's good to keep these guys on their toes right we why not to. why, why not why not keep these organizations on their toes and I suspect we've started something I think that there's been independent journalists around the world uh, sharing us with, uh, our stuff especially I've seen it on Twitter so I think that next annual event which I think is not so far away um, I have a sneaking suspicion that I won't be alone here which is only which is great yeah. because that's what I think I, uh, is necessary I think uh, what we managed to expose in our our time here um, if we can get more people out here and to break that safe space of this can only be good That's because right. the best disinfectant is light the truth light. the truth the truth and guys this is uh, real Rukshan here signing off with Avi Yemeni uh, it's been a pleasure for me to shadow the rebel news team uh, they have been doing an excellent job here so Please support them at wfreport.com. I think this is exactly the type of journalism that we need to see in our world. And thank you, Rukshan, and thank you to all the viewers. Rukshan, it's, uh, it's been tough. Um, I'm not easy to work with, am I? It's very difficult, guys. I uh, feel bad for Benji. <laughs> I feel very bad for Benji. Benji's having a nice holiday. So, Benji... Benji, I'm, no, I'm, Benji I'm, was uh, gutted at the <laughs> end because he, he originally couldn't come from medical yeah. and then that got changed and yeah. he, I think he was gutted but I think if you tell him I don't want your job Benji <laughs> working one week with this guy is enough for me I was this close to joining the globalists <laughs> at WEF <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I've got to go see a doctor <laughs>